Good morning, bright and early. Today is indeed departure day on the Disney Dream. It was a magical adventure, one that I would not change in any way, shape, or form. I loved it so, so much. And it's not over. We're still on board. We're still in this amazing veranda room. It is not over yet. You've got a great breakfast to experience. And then we're going to see how departure works on departure day from the Disney Cruise Line with some of their new policies. So it's not over yet. Looking forward to ending the adventure in style. Now, last night, our very kind state room host took all of our bags that we wanted to have sent down and took them to the port with the, the actual terminal right down there, which is great. So they're all waiting for us down there, but it means that you have to have things that you need on this morning out and about. So I had the shirt, pants, change all that good stuff, and my toothbrush kit, you know, all the things for the bathroom, all those things I kept around. And what ha what helps to kind of carry things around, have a super large bag like this for those last minute items to make things easier as you carry them off the ship. Instead of just using your carry-on item here, which is totally full for me, wouldn't have any other room. So having this extra bag helps a lot. It's a tip I've learned over time where it's like, oh, just in case there is something else, I've got this big bag, which I've got a little bit of extra space, just a few steps to get to the car, and then we're on our way. The survey is more important than ever on the Disney Cruise Lines. We want to make sure we let them know what we liked, what we thought they could improve. Overall, I thought it was a great trip. I really did. We'll definitely uh, let them know that our server staff was amazing. Our um, stateroom host, Fantastic. Everyone we interacted with was amazing. A couple small things here and there, but overall, I really thought it was an incredible adventure. The things that I would change, you know, more of those activities, I do miss. I really do. But the fact that we are back on board kind of makes up for that. It's like, all right, we're back. It's a slower, you know, rollout. This is a, you know, first time. Then we're going to start to expand some of those activities over time. It's going to be great. It will be. It's just, this is the very first one. I'm glad we had a chance to test it, and I'm looking forward to more activities returning once things get back to uh, to a point where they can return. One of these questions, how would you rate the weather on your cruise? I'm gonna say very good. We had that one rainy day at Castaway Key. Now there's a point in here, did any of the things in the state room not work out well? Everything was great, lighting, air conditioning, everything was perfect. The safe wasn't on. I don't think it was supposed to be on. I'm not gonna mark them off for that. I think that's, you know, it's probably related to all the safety precautions right now. So we're not gonna, we'll put that in like the comments, maybe just saying safe was off, but pretty sure it was supposed to be. One last look at this amazing veranda view. It's an incredible room. I love verandas, love them. And yeah, I'll definitely be back on a veranda again. No question about it. Bye room. All right room, we'll talk to you later. You can see we're leaving our little stingray friend right there as we make our way up. Breakfast time, let's do it. They're playing pirates in the lobby as we're making our way to breakfast now, Cabanas. Now we have options for breakfast. We could also go to Royal Palace. They have breakfast for us there, but we like Cabanas at the end of the cruise. It's just so nice and relaxing. It's always a little bit sad right at the end, but you know, it's, it's also filled with happy times because we're remembering the magical experiences that we've had on board. And it's, it's what it's all about. Not many people out and about right now. Everybody's getting ready to go. The disembarkation time is 9 a.m. A little earlier, well, not too much earlier than before, but feels earlier. It's the final breakfast of the cruise. It's sad, but it's all right. More of the Carmack card to fill out now. David's gonna grab some, and I will, starting off with water and guava. There's our breakfast today. Take a look, French toast, eggs, sausages. You've got that uh, ham and cheese croissant. Love that one. And blueberry muffin. Let's go ahead and dig in. Delicious breakfast. Finishing up the survey now. Health and safety measures survey. Here are some of the questions. Upper deck health and safety measures. I thought were excellent. Dining area health and safety measures. Also excellent. We know exactly what to do. Masks on throughout all this upper deck area for dining inside, except when you're at your table. Even if I was to stand up right here next to me and ask for a drink, I have to have my mask on. And it's right next to me. They were very clear about this and they're making it very easy to understand. And all the staff are super friendly. I, I haven't forgotten, David hasn't forgotten, but if anyone does forget, we've seen it a few times. They're like, oh, just through a little reminder, oh, mask, mask, and they go right to it. Everyone's great about that. Walt Disney Theater health and safety measures also super easy to understand. Just keep your mask on the whole time. Here's another interesting one. Comfort level with number of guests on board. I gave them an excellent, I'm very comfortable with the number of people on board this ship, uh, 1,600 from what I heard. It's, it's just, it's super, super nice. It is. And I realize it's not going to be like this all the time, but during this reopening phase where they're just kind of getting used to things, people are trying out new things, having like limited numbers, 40%, 50% capacity, just has made a big difference in how easy it is to follow the rules, like staying one party per elevator or 
keeping distant from other parties. It's easier when they have fewer people on board. So that, that gets an excellent for me. Just finished the survey. I think they really did a fantastic job with this cruise. The safety measures, the making everyone feel comfortable, the cleanliness. It was really an amazing experience. David, do you think this survey, you give them overall in terms of the experience. When they consider their scores, excellent, very good, good, just okay, poor, or not applicable because, you know, not applicable. What do you think overall of the cruise experience? I think overall I would give the cruise a not applicable. No, nah, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I really wasn't paying attention for five days. So, uh, <laughs> hey, that, that could mean excellent yeah, there you because go. you relax so much. True. You weren't paying attention. Ah. Excellent is, is the way to go. Okay, sure. all right. Cleaning is already back underway. They're cleaning every nook and cranny. Look all around here. All of these tables around me have been newly cleaned. You can actually tell, you can see with the shine of that uh, chemical they're using to clean it, everything is getting prepped for the next cruise. And there's a very deep clean that they do between the cruises. Up here on deck five, taking those last few minutes to appreciate the amazing cruise experience. Just looking down there, we'll be disembarking momentarily, but it was so much fun. There are so many things that are different from other cruises that we've taken with Disney before. Some of those are like how you're served at Cabanas, where they serve you across the way, or you know the gym time, those who have vaccine, those who don't, and other testing requirements in advance. But those are the biggest differences that I can think of. I think one of the biggest differences, I would say, is really the crowds, the amount of people that we saw when we were spending time on that top deck at Cabanas or trying to get in the hot tub definitely more accessible, I feel like, to get to a lot of those activities just based on the number of people on board. Couldn't agree more, and I think that was one of the big survey questions that uh, Disney had for us in the survey card here. It was, were you comfortable with the number of people on board? And I think it's even more so. Like, it's, it's true that the number of people is not gonna stay like this forever. Like, in five years, it probably won't be like this. But for now, anyway, it is kind of a, a nice way to experience it. Yes, we've got some other requirements that we have to have, like we're inside right now. Even though we're talking to you in camera, we have to have our masks on, right? Certain requirements are here. However, the benefits to me outweigh the negatives, you know? And that, I don't really see many negatives. I really, really enjoyed this. If you've cruised before, you will notice differences. Pretty big ones as you step on board. I think that was actually where I felt the biggest difference. You step on board, it's a, it's a different way of welcoming you. Then you go to your room and you find your key on your door and you don't get the lanyard till you get in your room. It, it was a little, it was things here and there. This, they seem small, they are small, they are small. But you'll notice them and it was like, oh wait, is this? Is this right? Dave, do you think that took away from your experience at all or just made it different? Yeah, honestly, I completely forgot about a lot of those <laughs> things. You know, thinking back, I'm like, oh, the big ones to note were because we kept going to Cabanas, you right. kept noticing that they served you the food. But by just a moment ago, I'd forgotten about the fact that we had to pick up the key cards ourselves. Really, later on in the cruise, once you've forgotten that, that that's how that went, it really has no impact at all. Stepping on board, I can appreciate that, the feeling that you get when they welcome you and there, there's more of a whole lobby full of people clapping or more flexibility to be able to just go to wherever you want to go. But at the end of the day, really, I, I don't feel it was that impactful. And I, I most definitely think it was worthwhile in terms of making those changes for the safety purposes and the benefits we gained from them. Totally agree. And you know, one final thought that comes to me here, knowing everything we know, price we paid for the cruise, all of that, would I go again? I'm gonna ask you the same question in a second, but personally, I would. I really genuinely enjoyed it. We had a little bit of you know, weather at Castaway Key, but it wasn't even that bad. Food was great. Everyone was just as friendly and magical as ever. I mean, I really, really love this adventure. It's one that I will commemorate in my mind as one super, super magical that I would definitely do again. Totally agree with you. I think it was fantastic. Really, really glad we had a chance to experience it. The pros most definitely outweighed the costs on this one, the changes that were made, and so most definitely would be back on a cruise in the near term and enjoy the current state of cruising. Now for a prediction question. How much longer will these kind of policies be in place on board the Disney Cruise Line? The answer, of course, we don't know. There's no way to know, but if you're making a guess, and I think, David, we talked about it before, somewhere around a year. I think you're absolutely right in terms of that. You know, you think about it at first, like, oh, it can't be more than a few months, but you know, things take time. Things are slow, we wanna make sure we're safe and being safe on board. And you know, before we've seen ships, we, we've been on board where a lot of people were, were ill and we actually could see a lot of people were ill on board. This one, I'm walking out of here. I don't know, have you seen anyone? No, no, I haven't seen anyone 
who's been sick on board as we make our way off. And you, you can always see them as, the, as they exit. That's always how it works, but no one. And so having these safety precautions and Disney seeing that this kind of strategy works. I totally agree. I feel like you could usually hear, especially here, you could hear the coughing or the sneezing or the people not feeling too well in the lobby as we're making our way off. Yes. That, that reminds me quite a bit of one previous cruise that we took where this one, maybe you can hear the occasional crying baby. But besides that, it doesn't sound like really that anyone's been all that ill. Maybe a couple, and you're more sensitive, you're more conscious yes. to it. Like the a couple sneezes with a couple coughs, but nothing it seems like really that significant or perpetual. And since we're listening for it that much more, it's probably less than it used to be. So I think we're doing something right. Agreed in full. You know, one of the other things that you mentioned a few minutes ago, we didn't go anywhere that involved any new guests. Every single person we interacted with on this cruise the entire way was a Disney person or was somebody who was already on board with us. So there was no exception to that. We didn't go to any other island. We just went to Castaway Key twice. So having that closed circuit really made for an extra safe adventure. We'll definitely be back on board again before you know it, thinking about future cruises already. But now it's time to say farewell for now. We'll be back. We'll see you real soon. I like, I like to see you real soon to one of our favorite Disney cruise ships. Dream, as you, last question, you categorize G Dream when you think about all the other ships that you've been on, you haven't been on Magic yet. Where do you put Dream? I am not sure in terms of the differences between the Fantasy and the Dream. Mm -hmm. I usually just categorize the newer ships versus the one older ship, the Wonder, that I've been on. And I like the newer ships. I love the functionality with the hot tubs, being right against that glass window, having the multiple of those to be able to look out on uh, different sides there. I like the whole setup in terms of a lot of those different pieces. I feel like Cabanas, I'm trying to remember, there were a few things that I liked about the newer mm -hmm. ships, but in general, I have a tendency to prefer those newer ships and some of the benefits offered with those. So I would put this in the top category for ships. I'm not sure if I showed this to you yet, but you can see hand sanitizer stations at every elevator. And there's again that sign, making our way to the lobby. Really enjoyed this cruise, we'll definitely be back for another one. Now for the first stages of departure. You have to have your room key, key the world card, right there and then you actually get in line to disembark the ship. You can see the guests standing behind me are just waiting to disembark. David's right there at the end of the line holding our spot. Oh, here we go. The moment of truth, but they just do it in small waves to make sure there's space between guests. This is it, the moment. All right, Disney Dream, we'll see you real soon. It's always so sad to step off, it is. I miss it already, I had such a magical time. Can't record through the custom screening area, but now outside, headed to the garage. What an adventure. I miss it already. It's sad, it is, because we're off the ship now. We can actually see the dream from right here. It was a magical trip, wasn't it? It was. It was, but we're going to miss it and looking forward to our next Disney cruise. Thanks so much for being a part of this magical adventure with us today. It was so much fun sharing it all with you. Until next time. Have a magical day. And see you real soon.